Hello and welcome to Farmer's Kitchen. We are outdoors today. We are. This is not glorious, Mrs. Farmer. It's finally nice. It's finally nice. Finally nice. It's a little warm yeah. sitting next to this fire. I am cooking. But I'll take it. Okay. We are not <laughs> going to complain. You know what? Today we're going to do fun stuff. Now, you mentioned a little while ago that you wanted some Mexican food. I love it, yeah. And then I started thinking about it. You know how once it gets in your head, you yeah. can, it's the only thing you can do? So tonight, I've got some surprises for you. Okay. I know you're going to like. Now, one thing, when we went to Mexico, I remember a smell on the street when we walked down the street and they were selling this particular item all over the place and it smelled like heaven. You know what they call it? What did they call it? Elote. Elote. Mexican street corn. Okay. Now you remember that? It yeah, was, I do it remember was, it was that. like something you would get at the fair okay. except different. Yeah. We're going to do that today and we're going to start that as an appetizer. Then okay. we're going to do a quick and easy guac recipe. Delicious. This stuff right here is really healthy until you do what we're about to do to it. <laughs> now we're gonna keep most of the mayonnaise out, but we do have mayonnaise for other things. That's right. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started over here and I'm gonna take four pieces of corn on the cob and I'm gonna lay those directly over the fire and I'm gonna kinda char that. Not, okay. not, not to the point that it's, it's completely black, but I'm gonna get a light char on it. So the other day we decided to visit mom and dad. Yeah. And they wanted a lasagna. Mm -hmm. And you wanted Mexican. So I started thinking about how we layered Lasagna. Yeah. I made the sauce, you put right. the cheese, and we're going to do that Teamwork. tonight. But we're going to make a Mexican lasagna. Now, these are not hard, but they're so good and they're so oh, yeah. easy. Sometimes these things are so easy, I think maybe we shouldn't even do it. But tonight, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Now, I'm going to start some onions before I put the hamburger on. All right, we got a little bit busy here. So, we moved the corn up just a little bit because that fire is hot. We're going to let it get warm up there and start moving it down until we get it where we want it. All right, I browned my onions there a little bit. Pop me some burger in there. I'm gonna get it going nice and brown. Okay, I'm putting some white chili beans in chili sauce. I'm gonna put probably 10 ounces of that. And then I'm gonna take some black beans. And I'm gonna probably take another 10 ounces of that. I'll mix that up. See where I'm going, Mrs. Farmer? I do, it looks good. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Now I'm gonna put some picante sauce in here. I'm gonna probably go, I don't know, at least a half a cup of that. Now, we're starting to get some flavor in here. Now, at this point, you can season this with whatever you want. Now, I usually put about a tablespoon chili powder, teaspoon and a half of cumin, or you can cheat and you could use one of your taco seasoning packets. And Nikki, if you will, cut me up some cilantro cilantro. Now I'm going to take some salsa, our salsa, and I'm going to put that in here along with some jalapenos. And oh, I wish you could smell this already. Now you can use black pepper, some salt. Now these are my pickled jalapenos. I just love them. They're already cooked down a little bit. They're not as hot. Miss Nikki doesn't like them real, 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 real hot. See where we're going? I do. It smells good. It smells really good. Now my other pan is preheated. Now I'm gonna take my tortilla shells and I'm gonna brown them. Just for a little extra added flavor. Now I'm just gonna let this go over here. Let that cook down, thicken up just a little bit. Here's how I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna come in with my first plane. Now that's still plenty hot. I'm gonna move it a little bit off the fire in a minute. All right, I'm gonna do that. And cheese. Duh. Cheddar and Parmesan. And we're going to layer this right here. Start it all over again. Now see, I'm not going to get that too thick because we got several layers. This is just enough for Nikki and I. And we might give Kelly some if she's real nice. Now on this last layer, I'm gonna to top this with some salsa and some sour cream. Mix that all up, some cilantro and more cheese. Put that on there, seal it up, cook away. So 
So Mexican street corn. Okay. Now, I'm not claiming to be the aficionado mm -hmm. or anything, but a lot of recipes are very simple. You want to hear how easy this is? I do. Mayonnaise. Love mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. All right. A little bit of mayonnaise. You know, and, and I thought it was butter, but I couldn't place it. I couldn't hmm. place. I should have known better. You know, mayonnaise does feel is oh, great yeah. replacement for butter. It is. It's nice and creamy. In the special way that this tastes when you put chili powder on it. It's unbelievable. Now, right. you, you could spice this up. You could put some black pepper. You could put salt. But we're just going chili powder, a little bit of lime juice, and some cilantro and I like boom this. that's the, that's the way i remember it mayonnaise on corn i like mayonnaise this. on corn so if you got a bonfire going mm -hmm. you got some friends coming over you got some corn on the cob great idea and you want to impress somebody with something that tastes absolutely wonderful and it to me it just has that full flavor of that mexican vacation that's a, what the greatest thing about vacations as we get older it seems to me like we enjoy the food culture oh yeah as much as anything else now we're just gonna take our chili powder. There's one more thing that goes on here Interesting taste. Too. If you'll turn those while. Right. There was a cheese, you know okay. what it was? No. Cotija. Cotija. C-O-T-I-J-A. Okay. And we're just gonna sprinkle some of that on there while it's still good and hot. <laughs> does that look familiar, Mrs. Farmer? It does actually, it's looking pretty good. And see, I was trying to analyze everything and I thought, is that feta cheese? Huh. But it wasn't. It's cotija. I'll tell you, I'm going to do one more thing. Okay. If you'll cut that lime in half for me. Well. For some reason, when I think about Mexico, I think about the smell of lime. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. The the cleaners they use down there. <laughs> smell like lime. Smells like lime. <laughs> All right. Here you go, Mrs. Farmer. I get to try some? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to do this one. Wow. <laughs> Is that beautiful mm -hmm. or what? Oh, wow. That's really good. That's delicious. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. That's really good. I can eat 26 of these. That's really good. Mm. Guacamole. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It is good. You think it's a hard recipe? It's really, I know it's easy because you've made it before. There's nothing to it. Now, a lot of people put a lot of things in it. You don't have to go that complicated. Right. If you hold that still, Mrs. Farmer. All right. I'm just going to smash these up. Now, you could use a potato mash or whatever you want. I use a fork. These are so good for you. This is like one of the best foods in the world. Avocado is delicious. The most simple recipe in the world for this, to me, is the way I'm making it today. Mm -hmm. Now, you could choose to put mayonnaise in it. If you choose not to, look at the consistency of that. It already looks like you've put mayonnaise in there. It does. You do not have to do that. In fact, you know what? We're not gonna do it today. You sure? I love mayonnaise. <laughs> We've got mayonnaise everywhere. I know. Here we have the beginnings of our guacamole. Three avocados, just smash up with a fork. I've got some yellow sweet onion. Now most people would put red onion in there, but if if onions give you indigestion, to me these are a little less potent. Yeah. I just want you to see how easy this is to have something wonderful. Nikki, yes. would you scoop me up some tomatoes? I will. How many you want? Give me. Let's put. Uh, okay, this is about two Roma tomatoes, some onions. We Got do. a little bit of garlic. Put about three cloves of garlic in there. Let's put some cilantro in there, Mrs. Moore. Ready? How much you want? Let's go back. A little bit more? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Two tablespoons, yeah. Now That's let's come back. Look. That looks delicious. Uses. Some lime juice. Gotta have lime juice. Oh, that looks good. That looks delicious. And it's natural. Yeah. Now, if you want to put some salt and pepper in there, you want to put some salt and pepper in there? We could. Just, Just a, a little tip. bit. A little pepper. Bit of pepper. You're not putting mayonnaise, huh? Nope, no mayonnaise. Really? Okay. And the one thing I do put, now this is optional. Some people like some, I like cumin in mine, just a little cumin, don't you? I do. And that's just a pinch. And that's an extra pinch. And that's just as pure and as natural. Now look at the consistency of that. Do you think we need mayonnaise? No, I guess not. Isn't that we don't. beautiful? That is beautiful. And what was that prep time? That was quick. Four minutes? Yeah, maybe. Is that? How is it? Oh, yum. That's good without mayonnaise, you're right. That's really good. Wow. So it's good, healthy. And just like that, Ms. Rama, we got guacamole. Yes, we do. Mm.
let's clear something up. We had somebody over the other day, and this person had a degree in biology, and they looked at the Virginia creeper that I had growing over by my pond, and they said, man, you need to clean that up. You've got poison ivy growing over here. And I'm saying, wait, 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 wait. Let's go look at this. Five leaves. Now, it's a vine like poison ivy, but it has five leaves. Take a look at this. This is Virginia creeper. Now, poison ivy has three leaves. And a lot of times it has a waxy appearance, kind of a shiny appearance. Remember this, leaves of three, let it be. All right, speaking of poison ivy, as a kid, when we got poison ivy, seems like the first thing my mom would do is go down to where there was water in a marshy area, and she would find some jewel weed. Now, some people call this a touch-me-not, but the common name is the common jewel weed. Its stem, when broken apart, is kind of like aloe. Now, juice comes out and it's very soothing, and it seems like it did help against poison ivy. So this is common jewel weed. There are a lot of folk remedies out there for eczema and burns and any kind of skin irritation, even bites. It does soothe the skin. I, I know that to be true. The next one I saw a whole lot of in the woods is clustered black snake root. Now, in the old days, they used to say that it was a good cure for snake bite. That's been proven to be untrue, but this stuff is everywhere. Clustered black snake root. All right, a lot of people confuse these with wild grapes, but this is common moon seed. Now, they do produce berries, but they are toxic to humans. Now, you can see birds eat them and they don't have any problem, but how do you tell the difference between moon seed, common moon seed, and wild grapes? Common moon seed lacks tendrils, and wild grapes have branching tendrils. So that's an easy way to tell. Okay, we've talked about this before. We have a huge patch of it. Actually, a couple patches of it around the front of our house. These need full sunlight, and we have tried them in other areas, and they will not grow, but they are. Look at the range of the eastern prickly pear, all the way from Texas to the east coast up into Canada. A lot of people would say there are no cactus in Kentucky, but these were found in Kentucky. And also, in western Kentucky, when I was rabbit hunting, I would find patches of these all over the place. Are they edible? Yes, the pads are edible and the fruit is edible. Now, on the eastern prickly pear, the fruit is not as sweet as some of the other prickly pears, but it is still very edible. And the flowers are orange and yellow and beautiful when they come out. And usually it's around June when they come out. Now it's funny, around our little fountain koi pond area, all these rocks are growing this natural habitat, just like the Virginia creeper. On the other side, I found an eastern marsh fern. They are a beautiful fern. Just remember, if you do find a plant that you think is medicinal or edible, make sure that you key it out very carefully or go to someone who knows what they're talking about because some of these things can be downright deadly. Anyway, as you're looking around, taking a walk in the woods, I hope you use this part of the show to say, hey, I saw that on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Now, Ms. Farmer, I checked that. It's been about 35 minutes. It's beautiful. Okay. It's perfect. Let's take this stuff out of the way. Let's make us a plate because it's dinner time. Yay. Mrs. Farmer, you ate the edge off of that. Shamey, shamey, shamey. This is too pretty to eat. That looks Look perfect. That. that looks perfect. All right, let's think about what we did here in a very short amount of time. We made flavored dish mm -hmm. that has all our favorite tastes in it. It's got beans, it's got the meat, it's got the cilantro, it's got oh, the yeah. salsa, it's got the picante sauce. We have Mexican street corn. Mm -hmm and we have guacamole. Are you kidding me? Perfect. In a short amount of time, Listen. and it's all beautiful, and it's all wonderful, Mrs. Farmer, I I'm want ready. you to try to hold that with a fork. Okay. I'm gonna slice you off a piece here. Look at that. I want you to have the first bite, Mrs. Okay. Farmer. That looks delicious. Make sure you get you some. Give me a little bit of everything. Oh, yeah. Mm. Dig it. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I got to bite of that. Put a little guac so on good. there, too. So good, so good. I'm gonna scoop me up just a little bit of guac to put on there, too. Very good. 
Outdid yourself again. Mm, look how pretty that is. I've eaten very little today. I saved up for tonight. You're gonna eat this whole thing, aren't you? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna eat as much of that as I possibly can okay. without exploding. <laughs> Wonderful, Delicious. easy and simple. Now, how about a quick dessert? Okay. What would you do? Churros, those are easy. How do you make them? You just use crescent rolls. You have cinnamon, sugar, and butter, and we cook those. It's, and you know what, I even got some chocolate sauce to dip it in. Let's do it. All right. Let me get another bite though first. Wow, the sun is sinking in the west, Mrs. Farmer. Yes, you it notice is. it does it every night. It does do that. That it's means unusual. it's time for dessert when it time does for that. Dessert. That's right. What have we here? This is so simple. And I can't believe we don't do this with the grandkids. We need to remember this. But crescent rolls. Bought some crescent rolls. Pop them right out of the refrigerator. You just take them out. And I've kind of let them get room temperature. And I'm just going to pull them apart here. This is a quick and easy oh, yeah. Dutch oven recipe. Go ahead and get your Dutch oven up to about 350 degrees. It's what, a 15 minute recipe? 15 minutes, and it's so simple. It's quick and easy, and it tastes good. And I'm just gonna leave these kind of rectangulars and see how they're, you see, they separate for the rolls. I'm gonna push them together here, make it like one little rectangle. See how they're all kind of together here. Did you notice I was still eating while you're doing I that? I did notice that. Are Pretty, you jealous? I'm not jealous. All right, I'm gonna, I have melted some butter over here. All right. I have melted, this is just three ingredients. Crescent rolls, two tablespoons of butter, and right here I have two tablespoons of sugar with a teaspoon of cinnamon. That's it. How can you go wrong? That's right. It's a kid's favorite. So I'm gonna take this. We're just gonna butter these. Oh, quick yeah. and easy. Butter's good. We tried these earlier, they're really good. Yeah, we did. <laughs> then, we, then we make it even more decadent and dip them in chocolate. That's right. You gotta have something to dip them in. All right, so we have those. And now we're just gonna use, I'm gonna use up all this cinnamon on, on these. Mm. Butter, cinnamon, yeah. sugar. Kids' favorite. How many things could you start with that? <laughs> Butter, cinnamon, should we just put that on toast? That's what Mom it makes me think of. used to make that for breakfast, so it sort of smells like. I got a pizza cutter here. Right. And I'm gonna cut this in half, and then again. So I have four pieces out of all these. So see how they each make four slices? I can dig it. You can dig it. So you don't have to be all perfect in your nah. lines and everything. And just we're just gonna twist off. these. And I'm gonna lay those in the pan after I twist them. I like quick and I like easy. Yeah. And again, think ahead. Get your cast iron ready to go. That's preheated. It should cook pretty quick. Now we have our temperature over here, a little different from what you normally see. Right. We've got our fire on the bottom, and then we take our coals and put on top. And we right. can eyeball it at this point in life. But if you're using, if you're using your charcoal briquettes, how many? I already forgot. Seven, 17 and eight. <laughs> yeah, 17, 17 and eight, that's and what eight. it is. Okay, I remember <laughs> 17 now. 17 on Woo. top, eight on the bottom. Too many questions, all right. Got a little bit of butter left, so I'm gonna go ahead and butter these. You want you can sprinkle a little more cinnamon. Let's use yeah. that all. And then I'm gonna move these to the pan. I'll do it. Do I get paid extra? You do. Mm -hmm. You get to eat all of them. They look good. <laughs> you right. Just pop them in your I'm 350 pop them in. pan and boom. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. When we was kids in school, let out our cousin from the city. He used to come and spend the summer with us on the farm. I'll never forget the year he got into the poison ivy. We had no idea it caused him so much harm. Me and my brother told him he would grow if he eat a lot of green apples. That's how he come down with the backdoor crops. We was down on the creek of fishing. He grabbed his belly and dived in the weeds. That's where he found that poison ivy patch. Poison ivy. Now you know what it looks like. All summer he laid in the shade. Couldn't even ride his bike. That day on the creek when he cleaned himself, thought it was weeds and grass. That's how he got poison ivy on his face. He blamed the whole thing on us. We thought it was funny. He told on us, we both got a switching. It's worth getting in trouble for. We couldn't quit laughing to watch him scratch it. In them places, he was a itching. Poison ivy. 
Now he knows what it looks like. All summer he laid in the shade and he couldn't even ride his bike. That day on the creek when he cleaned himself, thought it was weeds and grass. That's how he got poison ivy on his face. Now the summer slowly passed by and our cousin was getting better. Our mama used a gallon of calamine. But he took a major setback and me and my brother tried to cure him with a coal oil rag and a bottle of turpentine. Poison ivy, now he knows what it looks like. All summer he laid in the shade, couldn't even ride his bike. That day on the creek when he cleaned himself, thought it was weeds and grass. That's how he got poison ivy on his face. That's how he got poison ivy on his arms and legs and neck and back and ears and feet and face. Thank you, music lovers. Dessert. That's right. Now, we tried this because we haven't done this for a while. Mm -hmm. This was the first practice batch. I ate the second practice batch. You did. <laughs> and the third one's going, so let's... And I let these sit a little. That's why they're, look how they're nice and hard. Yes, I love it. And you know, some people make their own homemade chocolate sauce. I cheated. I just got us some fudge. I dip them. Tastes like a mm. donut with mm -hmm. that on. That's good. I'm not double dipping. Look, I switched sides. Okay. Oh my. That's really good with the chocolate sauce. It is good with the chocolate sauce. It tastes like a donut. It does. Oh, it does taste like a donut. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yum, Papa. Sammy, love that. Mm hmm I didn't try the chocolate sauce yet. That makes it. It does. It's really good. It's really good without it, but my goodness, that just throws a curveball in there. We need to remember this when the kids are here. So simple. Ooh. We got one more batch in there. Okay. Next time you see us, <laughs> might have to get a different chair. <laughs> you know, Miss Farmer, that is a half hour. That's a lot of cooking. That was a whole lot of cooking in a half hour, but I mean, think about that. We made guac, mm -hmm. we made Mexican street corn. Right. We made a beautiful Mexican lasagna. You did. And then you made these beautiful, wonderful churros that are just absolutely delicious. We can eat all night long. And if you see this show and you think, I wonder if they have any more recipes. Well, we do, we have 27 gazillion That's recipes. A lot. Where are they, Mrs. Farmer? They're on timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. They are at that. There's how-tos on there, mm -hmm. how to make a smokehouse, how to butcher a cow. Right. Everything. Old time hog killing, everything you can imagine. Canning, all kinds of stuff. But if you go there, hit the little red button, subscribe. We're getting close to 100,000. We need folks wow. out there to get it up to 100,000. We're almost there. But our Facebook page is really hard to get on. Yes, it is difficult. It takes, what, 12, 13 steps? It does. What do you have to do? Hit like. Wow, that's pretty <laughs> amazing. So just hit like the right. Facebook friend. We talk on there to folks all the time. And we have a cast iron cooking site as well. It's the sister page to our page. That's a group over there. It's called Cast Iron Cooking with Tim Farmer. Mm -hmm. Share your ideas over there. That's about you. That's about folks taking their own pictures, their own food. We love it. So at this time, Mrs. Farmer, before we get embarrassingly uh, chow hound mm -hmm. we should probably say our goodbyes so That's I can right. smack down on those can things. Can I at least have two? You can. Okay, I'll, those I'll are mine. Those me. Kelly wants that one. Okay, Kelly gets the middle. So it's all about? Good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next week in a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.